What we're talking about today is the role of pastors that really led up to the revolutionary right. war and what their part would play. I tell you, the, these pastors we had in the American Revolution were men. Uh, in, in the West, we would say they were men with a bark on. You know, they wore out their clothes from the inside out. You know, so they, they were they were rough. They were rugged individuals. They they knew the Bible. They were committed to principle. Yes. They did, they they were not vicious in any sense, and that's why Pastor Clark was so emphatic that you have to do this a biblical way. Don't you fire the first shot. But if they fire at you, the Bible gives you every right of self-defense, and you can go after them. One of the great examples I love of a man of God, you know, we use that term, man of God, it was a man of God, was the Reverend John Wise out of Ipswich, Massachusetts. Now, he was an intellectual thinker, one of the greatest intellectual forces in early colonial America. He's the guy that from his pulpit, he already taught from his pulpit that taxation without representation is tyranny, the right. consent of the governed, all, all these things in the Declaration he taught. But he was no small, wimpy, namby-pamby kind of a guy. He was a large physical specimen. He was a great wrestler as well. And as he was growing old, his years were passing by, a young man named John Chandler from a neighboring town decided he wanted to wrestle Pastor Wise, take him on a wrestling match. So he went to, to Ipswich. He came from, John Chandler came from Andover over to Ipswich, challenged Pastor Wise to a wrestling match. And Wise said, I'm too old, man. I'm sick. My hair's gray. I can't do this. And he kept pushing him and so on. Okay, I'll take you on. So, I mean, just moments after this wrestling match started, Pastor Wise picked him up bodily and threw him over the front fence. And so this young ship captain thinks he's tough. He stands up, he brushes himself off, he gets his dignity, regains his full height. He said, Pastor Wise, you defeated me. I'll be on my way just as soon as you throw my horse over the fence after me. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a concession. This is a strong physical guy. Reverend Wise, in the same way, there was a time when some members of his congregation were captured by pirates there in, in Massachusetts. And as he led the prayers that Sunday, he prayed that God would bring them to deliverance or that his men would rise up and butcher the enemies who had captured them. The next day, then the men rose up and butchered all the pirates who had captured them. The whole town's convinced God answers his prayer. You know? <laughs> but those aren't likely to be the prayers we would pray today. Those aren't the images we have of preachers, of pastors. But these were men of God in every sense. Preachers were so important. Pastors were so important in the American Revolution that they were recognized by their opponents. The British called them the Black Regiment because the ministers wore black robes. And these guys wearing the black robes, that was the Black Regiment, and that was the one that was creating all the trouble. It was these guys that were recruiting men to go fight. It was these guys that were leading the battles. This Black Regiment, all these preachers in these black robes out fighting the battles, that was the real trouble for the British. And, and the British accused the preachers of stirring up the sedition and, 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 and rousting the coals of sedition. I mean, they blamed the preachers for the American Revolution. Wow. So when the British caught a preacher as a prisoner of war, they were treated more roughly than were the American soldiers that were caught as prisoner of war. And in the American Revolution, we lost over 10,000 more soldiers to British prisoner of war camps than we did to British bullets. So prisoner of war camps are rough anyway, but for a preacher it was rougher than it was for a soldier. That's the recognition that the British had of the leadership of preachers in the American Revolution. Consider 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 and 2. In this passage, we are told to pray, quote, First of all, for all people, for our leaders and those in authority. Notice, God tells us to pray for our civil leaders first of all, before we pray for ourselves, our families, or our churches. There's nothing else in the Bible that God tells us to pray for first of all. This must mean that God thinks that civil government is important. And recall the parable of the minas in Luke 19. The master calls his servants together and gives them all a mina, a trust, a stewardship. The master departs and then later returns to take account of their stewardship. One had taken the mina and turned it into ten. Another had turned his into five. And another had taken his trust and not used it at all. The one who refused to get involved with what the master had entrusted him was the one who got in trouble. But notice the reward for the other two. To the one, the master said, Well done, good and faithful servant. I will make you a ruler over ten cities. To the other, he said, Well done. 
I will make you a ruler over five cities. Notice the reward of the master for their faithful stewardship. He places them in the civil government. Today, we don't think of being in civil government as a reward from the master, but maybe it's time to rethink our beliefs about civil government based on what the Bible says. You know, pastors really were leaders in the American Revolution, and they were leaders not only off the battlefield, but also on it. But they were community leaders, and they weren't leaders just by their position, their title. They literally earned that position of leadership. They demonstrated either through courage or through conviction or, or through uh, their preaching, their knowledge of the word, that they were worthy of that leadership. And I find it really significant that as you go into the American Revolution, the Continental Congress is, is operating, they're trying to conduct the war in the Revolution. You have so many ministers out on the battlefield fighting that in 1778 is a great example. On, on May the 8th of 1778, Congress wanted the nation to know the update on the war. So Congress says, here's what's happened at this point. We've been in conflict now for several years. Here's where we are, and here's where we think the future leads. Here, here's what we think is happening. And so Congress went through and talked about what the British had been doing, uh, all the slaughters, uh, all the terrible things that had happened, how that they have now incited the Indians to turn loose on us. And so in addition to fighting the British, we're fighting the Indians. So all this is going on, and then Congress writes a summary that says, but the God of heaven has been our aid and our assistance in all this and the prospects are bright because reliance on him we're convinced that he and so it was a, it was a great spiritual peace and you'll find that throughout Congress the writings and the proclamations they did but this particular one is so substantial because they wanted the people to have the update on the war so at the end of it what they did was they put a resolution asking every minister of the gospel to take that congressional document and read it Sunday morning after services were over. Anybody wants to stay around? You look, they want the word out in America, but they did not say, let's print it in the newspapers. They did not say, let's put this on, on the public posting boards and put broadsides up. They did not put it with town criers. They said, we need the preachers to read this out of the pulpit so that America knows what's going on. The preachers had more impact, literally, this is documented, preachers had more impact at getting out the news than did the newspapers. The greatest source of getting out the news was preachers. Congress even went to the preachers when they needed something distributed across the nation. And literally, there's a very substantial chance that without their leadership, that we would not have the independence we have today had it not been for pastors taking the lead role in so many areas of American life and culture. For more information on the American Heritage series or to find books and other resources, visit wallbuilders.com. Through the American Heritage Series, renowned historian David Barton communicates our nation's forgotten, godly foundations and encourages us to once again view history through a truthful lens. For only when we recognize and embrace God's hand in our history can America become all that it was intended to be. Through Wall Builders, historian David Barton seeks to rebuild the walls of America's unique religious, moral, and constitutional heritage by educating the public and encouraging people of faith to become active in strengthening America's great foundations. For more information on how you can become involved, visit wallbuilders.com.